Hallelujah. I'm glad that you're with us this evening. Operation Christmas Child, I wanted to start out with that. You're like, Mark, we're past Christmas, I know. But remember, we told you we would let you know where the boxes went to, and we received confirmation this week that the boxes went to uh, Peru and to Paraguay. So, amen. amen. So, 62 boxes. Our goal was 60. We sent 62, and we paid for 62 discipleship classes for those uh, people to go to a Bible class and to receive a Bible at the end of that. And after the end of that class... I believe that they're confident enough and have enough knowledge that they can share the gospel with their families. Praise the Lord for that. I'd like to open up with Psalm 121 this evening. If you want to read along with me, Psalm 121, starting with verse 1. I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth he will not suffer thy foot to be moved he that keepeth thee will not slumber but he that keepeth israel shall neither slumber nor sleep the lord is thy keeper the lord is thy shade upon thy right hand the sun shall not smite beat thee by day nor the moon by night The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. Glory to God for that. And he shall preserve thy soul. The Lord, the Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your promises. Thank you for your word, for it is a surety and is sure and true. And we can rest in the fact that we are in your care and that our souls are protected from the evil one and that you, O Lord, keep us and you protect us and you preserve us both now and forevermore. Bless this time of fellowship. Bless this time as we meet together to come and worship, to comfort one another, to pray for one another and to worship you in spirit and in truth. Come, Holy Spirit, and minister to us and those who are watching via the internet. We thank you, Father, for your goodness tonight. In Jesus, our Savior's name we pray. Amen. And amen. These are the days of Elijah. Amen. These are the days. happening look up your redemption is drawing nigh i believe that to be true tonight jesus is getting ever closer to taking us his bride his beautiful bride his church to the place where he's always wanted us with him hallelujah we hear about the wars see
remember the preacher saying, Son, it shall come to pass. There will come a generation that will be the last. I can't believe I'm standing here, seeing the end of time, and the preacher. Yeah.
Aleluya.
Can you say that with me? It is well with my soul. What's your soul? Your mind, your will, your emotions. It is well with those things. Why? Because we've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Our sins have been washed away. We have been put in right standing with our Father. And we can come boldly unto Him with our petitions and our requests, our prayers, with our heartaches. We can come directly to Father in heaven right now. Right at this very moment, we can be in his presence as we come together and we pray for those who are hurting, those who are lost, those who are in states of distress, those who have bodies which are ill and need a touch from God or else they won't make it. Right now, we are standing in front of the Father. We are kneeling in front of the Father. We are jumping up into Father's lap just as a child does and says, Daddy, help me. Or this hurts. And he takes his gentle hands and he touches the spot. I have some prayer requests here and then we'll pray for these and any that you might add to it. We have Howard and Mary for Traveling Mercies. Judy Jones is still in the rehab center and Rose also. They all need a touch. And Beth is healing up from her bout with COVID. Someone ran into Brenda Ritter and her brother passed away about four days ago. And so she asked that we would pray for her. And Peggy is going through things with her brother. I'd like to ask, ask you to pray for my family, my extended family. My brother is in the, in the midst of perhaps going on to glory even this evening. We don't know. But we do know that he's in the hands of God, that he's safe, that he's secure. And for any of us, the moment we close our eyes in this world, we open them up to a vast expanse of glory. So I want to pray for that. And who else perhaps has some prayer requests that we could join together with you on it? Okay. Pam and John for Traveling Mercies. And who else? Mary? Okay, a man named Pete who's in hospice, who, Pete Snow. Okay, and he needs the Lord. He needs Jesus. He needs to be washed in the blood. He needs a touch from God's Spirit in his life. I don't know where he's at, who's around him, but I know that God, if we intercess for him right now that the Lord can send somebody to speak to him.
You know, our nation needs the intervention of God. Our nation needs to repent and turn from its wicked ways. Because the floodgates for the enemy have been opened because God protected this nation through Jesus Christ and it's serving him and proclaiming him as Savior. But as the nation has abandoned him, it's as the story was in the New Testament that Jesus told of the house being swept clean. But then the evil spirit saw that there was a place for them and they came and they brought more. And that's what's happening in this nation right now. The enemy is coming in like a flood. Well, how do you get rid of that? We were told in the Old Testament, when the enemy comes in like a flood, what do you do? You raise up the standard. You raise up the cross of Jesus Christ. It's the only answer. The blood that was shed on Calvary, that's the only answer for this nation, for this world. So until that happens, the enemy is going to continue to gain ground because this is his world at the moment. God has given him lease and license to move and operate. The only thing standing between him and the utter destruction of this planet is you and I. The Spirit of God dwelling inside of us is the stop to the devil right now. That's why it's so important that people get right with Jesus before the rapture. Because once the Spirit of God through us is removed, this world is be going to become a hellhole, literally. And so we need to pray. We need to pray for those in authority over us. And what I mean by that is those that are in political offices and places of authority that are far from God, well, we need to pray that they'll somehow repent. They need to repent like anybody else. They're no different. Democrat, Republican, I don't care what name you put on them. They're mostly liars and thieves because they're lost. I don't say that they're liars and thieves because that's what they are. I say that, that because they're lost. They follow their father, the devil. We follow our father in heaven, amen? But you see, we've been born again. We're not of the same family. So we want them to become a part of what? God's family and our family. All right, let's go to prayer. Father, I thank you that you are with us this evening, that your presence is here, that your presence is in those households that are watching. Father, we lift up Pam and John and Howard and Mary as they are traveling. Lord, we know that you are the protector of those who travel. Because as you traveled and as you walked throughout Judea and Samaria and all of those lands, you were protected by the Holy Spirit and by God's holy angels surrounding you. We pray that for these people who are traveling in the name of Jesus. We lift up this nation. Father, we pray for repentance. We pray for godly sorrow in men and women's hearts that they will become sorrowful that they're so far from you and that they will see that and that they'd be willing to bend a knee and turn and repent and turn from their wickedness and seek your face so that our land might be healed. But in the meantime, Father, we pledge to you that we will pray for those who need you. We will pray for our country that it would return so that the gospel can continue to go forth in a mighty way. We lift up Judy Jones to you, Lord, and Rose as they are in places where their bodies are being taken care of. We pray for your presence in a way that they will not be lonely, that they will sense your peace in everything that they do. We lift up this gentleman, Pete Snow, Father, in the name of Jesus. We rebuke the enemy. We plead the blood of Jesus over that life, that there would be a salvation message that would be brought to him that is broken, that his heart would become broken, that heart and bitterness would be removed from him and that he would see you in all your glory and turn before he passes on into eternity. We pray for Brenda Ritter. Father, as her brother has passed recently, we just pray for your comfort to come to her. She knows you and she loves you. But nothing can take the place of when you send the sweet Holy Comforter in a special way. When you, Holy Spirit, move inside of us and comfort and heal. 
We pray for Peggy as she is going through the separation, the separating of her brother as he is terminally ill. Father, we just pray that in the midst of that situation that you be glorified. And I lift up, Lord, my brother and his wife as they are out in California. Lord, in that place, they are not alone for your spirit is with them. I know from speaking to them, they sense your presence. So Lord, thank you that you are there in the midst of every trial, every storm, and nothing can separate us from your love. Hallelujah. We pray for the rest of the family, Lord, that you would comfort and that you would give them wisdom and encouragement, Lord, for endings in this world are just the beginning in your world of glory. So we thank you for that. We thank you that we can rest on that, that we can have peace, that we can have blessed assurance, that we need not fear. Death, where is your sting and grave? Where is your victory? It is not there any longer because Jesus conquered both and he has reclaimed the keys Hallelujah to life and liberty. So thank you for your precious promises. Thank you for being with us tonight. Bless each and every person, I pray in Jesus' mighty, wonderful name. Amen. And amen. Yes, touch my sister's body too. Right here, right now in this place. Touch it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In fathomless, fathomless billows of love. Thank you, Jesus. Is that peace? Peace. Yeah, let's just sing that before we move on. Peace. Jesus is, there is peace. Amen? That's why you want to be close to him. 
He says, draw nigh to me and I will draw nigh unto you. Our little steps towards God are countered by huge gargantuan steps from him, so much so that he reaches all the way from glory all the way down to us here on this planet. Thank you, Lord, for that. You are so good. I've never found God not to be good. I've found myself to not be good, but I've never found him to not be good good and great. I started a message last week, started starting over. That was the name of the message, starting over. Starting over. Almost everybody, I could say everybody in this place in one way or another has something in their life, something that they need to call upon God for and say, I need to start over in this, whatever you fill in the blanks with. I need to start over. I need to start over with your casting out fear in my life because I'm full of fear and I know that's not of faith. I need to start over with faith so that fear diminishes. I need to start over with love in my heart for other people because it's been worn down and it's been rubbed and it's been brought to a place where it's hard for me to have compassion on others. I need you to help me start over, oh God, with other people. There's people that I've not been a good witness to. Help me to start over, oh God. Help me to start over with understanding who Jesus Christ really is. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, Jesus Christ. You need to understand who He is. He's not some man that died on a lonely hill in Golgotha some 2,000 years ago. He was the Son of God. He was fully God, fully man, who gave Himself a living sacrifice. That's who Jesus is. He's the one who spoke and the world and the universe came into existence by him, for him, through him, were all things created. That's who Jesus is. We don't serve some man who died on a cross. We serve the risen, living God of glory who is seated at the right hand of the Father. That's who Jesus is. we got to grasp a hold of who he is, and someday we're going to see him face to face. Oh, hallelujah. I would have loved to have seen him been back 2,000 years ago and been one of those apostles or one of those close to him. But oh, I'm telling you, friends, that is nothing compared to the day that you see him in glory. Because John told in the book of Revelation that when he saw Jesus Christ in all of his glory in the kingdom of God, John knew him on the earth. He was called the beloved John and him were this, like this on the earth, but when he saw Jesus Christ in glory, he said, I fell on my face as a dead man to behold and see the glory and the magnificence and the splendor of Jesus Christ. You got to understand, you got to start over with who Jesus is. You got to have reverence for him. You got to have an understanding of just who he is and what he did to bring you to the Father. Thank you, Lord, for that. Oh, thank you, Lord. It's a new season. This is how I started last week. It's a new season. It's a new day. Yes, it is. Every day is a new day. I said this last week. Morning lasts but for a short period of time, but joy comes in the morning. When we go to bed at night and it's dark, if we choose to, we could say, oh, the light is never going to come. It's going to be dark forever. Whoa, woe is me. What am I going to do? But you know as well as I do that in another eight hours or so, the sun is coming up and there will be light. So it is with God. That's the analogy he gives. Yes, there may be some darkness. Yes, there may be some hard times. Yes, there may be some trials. But the light 
of Jesus Christ is coming and there will be joy in that morning. Oh, that morning is coming, that great gladsome day, that day without end, that day in which we shall see him face to face when we shall know as we are known, that day when we shall behold all of the glories of heaven, that day is soon to come. And that will be a day of joy that never ends. Do you long for a day of joy that never ends? We can't even imagine that, can we? It's too difficult. Because even if I get up in the morning and I'm joyful, by the end of the day, there's been something that's come along that's tried to crush me and to take that joy away. Amen? You feel that? I feel that. I sense that. I know that. But I also know that joy (laughs) is just around the corner. So the things that I went through last week were start healing in your life today from Second Chronicles, healing in your land, healing in your life. And I said healing in your land because we often pray that and say, I want healing in my country, my nation. No, I want healing in my land, my house, the places where I put my feet. I want healing in those places because those are really the only places that I have control over. I don't have control over the state of Ohio or even the city of Toledo, but I do have control through the authority given to me by Jesus Christ in my life and in my land and where I walk and in my home. My home shall be a place of peace. My home shall be a place of where Jesus Christ is exalted, my home will be a place where those who are hurting can come and receive restoration because they hear the Word of God. So healing in your life today. You don't have to wait for tomorrow for any of these things. Start having joy in your life today. Start vanquishing fear in your life today. Start praising God today. Start understanding just who Jesus Christ is today. Start living in everlasting life today, John three sixteen. The moment that you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior or the moment that you surrender all to Him, you are in everlasting life. That's hard to grasp too. You see... Right now, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you're already living in eternal life. Doesn't matter what happens to the tent, the tabernacle, the body. You, 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 you are living in eternal life. You're not ever going to close your eyes and go to sleep and be in the dark for centuries, for days, for hours, for minutes. For seconds, no, your life will never end. The moment you close the eyes here, you open them and you are in glory. Hallelujah. It's a new season. It's a new day. Start living that way. Live without condemnation. He has not given us a spirit of condemnation and neither does he condemn us. Start living with the acceptance of God. That's where I'm going to start tonight. John chapter 6, 37 through 39. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me. I love this part. This is the Father's will that Jesus followed that all of which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son, every one which seeth Jesus and believes on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Glory to God. Jesus says, I will never lose those whom have been given to me to keep unto that day. I can never be lost. Can you say that? I can never be lost because I'm in his 
care, and he promised the Father that he would not lose anyone that was his. Woo, that's good. So he says, start living with the acceptance of Father God today. 2 Corinthians 5.18 says this, And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. The ministry of reconciliation. What does that mean? Just reading through that real quickly, I'm like, yeah, that sounds nice. The ministry of reconciliation. What's been reconciled? Well, me to him. That word, when you search it out, reconciliation means agreement. When you come to Christ, when you've been washed in the blood, when you've surrendered your life through Christ to God the Father, He says, you are now in agreement with me, and I'm in agreement with you. That's a great place to walk. Because if you're in agreement with God, who can defeat you? Who can defeat you if you're in agreement with God? Nobody. Nobody can defeat you. You're invincible. Not in your body necessarily, but at times, yes. But in your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions, You're undefeatable with him. Agree with God. Agree with his word. Agree with his promises for you. Call upon him in the time of trouble, and what does he say? I will answer you. Anybody in trouble? Anybody had some troubles? My sister here, she was having troubles a week or two ago. Right? You want to testify? Testify. I'll get you a microphone. She's not afraid. You got to have a testimony. I got a testimony. Uh, so uh, I've been tired, and and when I had Maya, they were saying that my thyroid was messed up. And I was like, okay, well, just keep an eye on it. So then when I had twins, they said, your thyroid is messed up. So, okay, okay. You know, so when I went to the doctors, she was like, you're fine. And I'm like, great. And I'm tired all the time and depressed. And my sister was like, you've been depressed? I'm like, sometimes I get down. I do. I get, but I didn't know. I didn't know that the thyroid could do so much. So when I went to go see the thyroid doctor again two weeks ago, he was basically like, there are nods on your thyroid. Um, diagnosed with Graves' disease, so all I'm using, you know, because I'm like, why do I keep getting COVID? Like, everything I touch, I'm like, I'm COVID-existent. So, but when they did the test, he just called and said they are negative. So it's growing, I don't know, but he was like, we don't have to do anything. So I have to keep on it. And you are, at this point, okay, so I have to have medicine. So, like, I got a diagnosis, but God is a good guy. Yes, he is. Yes, he, is. he is a faithful yes, is. God. To, I'm, I'm going to look, pastor, I'm not going to take your message, but God is a good God. And in this year, God has been faithful to us. You have to keep your eyes on the author and the perfecter of your faith. Hallelujah. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to get this microwave. Yeah. He's the author. He's the perfecter. And what is he also? The finisher. He's the finisher of your faith. If your faith is in him, he says, I'm going to finish it. I'm going to finish it, and I'm going to bring you to where I'm at. I'm going to finish this thing. Woo! So I get home, and I say to my mom, I say, Mom, something going on my throat. Like, it's hurting. And uh, it's just like just pain on the inside, but it's not a sore throat. It's just a pain in my throat. So she said, get the anointing oil. I said, Mama, get the Pepsi. So I'm swallowing this anointing oil. Just small faith, because I'm like, you know, I'm, not th- I'm thinking, 
Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. You know what I'm saying? So she said, get the anointing oil, sir. Swallow anointing oil. I don't know if y'all had to swallow anointing oil, but my mom believes in anointing oil. So I'm just swigging. And so she just got to praying. And I'm telling y'all, by the time she said amen, it was gone. Hallelujah. It was gone by faith. We walked by faith. I'm getting out of here. I'm getting out of here. Oh, that's dancing and shouting music. You say music, yeah. Yeah, her voice is music. The devil is trying to take her voice. Oh, he can't have it. He can't have it. He tries. Yeah, he tries to take everything from us. He, yeah, he tried to take her. Yeah. No, about... Her thyroid, her thyroid, food, and he spent all of his father's wealth, and he destroyed his life so much so that he had to come basically crawling back to home and say, I'd be happy, I'd be willing to just sleep in the servants' quarters on the ground, whatever, at my father's house. I'd be willing to do that rather than die here in this pig pen in this heathen place with friends that only liked me because I had money, friends that only liked me because I did stuff for them. I'd rather live underneath my father's house. I'd rather sleep on the ground than live through that. But what happened when he came back? The father, the Bible says, we're looking for him. He wasn't, the father wasn't off running off doing other things. He was still looking for his son. And when he came back, he gave him the ring. He had the robe put on him. He prepared a feast. You see, when you start living dead to sin, God will come alive in your life. Hallelujah. So start agreeing with God today. Have the ministry of agreement with Him and with Jesus and start living dead to sin. Galatians 2 and 20 says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Does Christ live in you? He needs to live in you so much that the life that you now live in this fleshly body, in this tent, in this tabernacle, you live it in the faith of the Son of God who loves you and gave himself for you so that you do not frustrate the grace of God for if righteousness come by the law then Christ's death is in vain. Start living in supreme grace and get out from under the law. The law will kill you. The law cannot be kept by any man or woman. It never has been. It never was designed to be. The law was designed to show you just who God is. If righteousness comes to a person's life by living right, then Jesus didn't need to come. I'm going to tell you a secret. There's a lot of non-Christians that live way better lives than a lot of Christians do. There's a lot of unbelievers that give a lot of money, that give a lot of love that do a lot for other people. And there's a lot of Christians that would rather fight over the color of a carpet in a building than be involved with reaching out and helping somebody who's lost and dying and hurt. Jesus would rather you walk out the doors of the building and go out in the street and find somebody. My sister over there calls us almost every week. I talk to somebody about Jesus. And I led them to the Lord. Where they're going to go from there, I don't know, but I prayed with them to accept Jesus. Hallelujah. That's not just for her or me or one or two people. That's for everybody. Hey, you need Jesus. You got to have him. You got to have Jesus. I'm telling you, if you don't have him, you're lost. You're lost forever. And you're not only lost, but you're going to be separated from the only one who ever really, truly loved you before he, anyone ever knew you. While you were still in your mother's womb being knitted, he loved you. Hallelujah. There's a period in time when mama didn't even know you were in her womb. Mama didn't know Isaiah was in there 
for about three months. The first trimester. But God already loved him even though she didn't know and I didn't know he was there. God loved him, was taking care of him, forming him, fashioning him, creating him, helping his feet to kick eventually so he would have that beat that he needed for playing the drums. (laughs) True. That's true. It's very true. God loved you so much that from the foundation of the world, before you were even thought of by anybody in this world, before the foundation of the world, God knew that you were going to need to be saved. He knew that you were going to need a redeemer. He knew that he loved you. Even though he saw all the junk and garbage you were going to do, he loved you. And he was going to have to come down here and he was going to have to get you himself. There was no other way. If there had been another way, believe me, Don't you think that the greatest intellect, the greatest mind of all time, God, Jehovah Jireh, that he could have found another way to do it? There was no other way than for him to come and redeem you with that precious, holy blood. Moses was given instructions in building the tabernacle when he built the Holy of Holies place where the Ark of the Covenant sat and the blood was sprinkled on it, God told Moses, you fashion these things that I'm telling you, I'm giving you the measurements of, for they are a representation of what is in heaven. In heaven, he already knew that his son's blood, that he was going to shed blood and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat in glory so that you and I could be covered and washed and brought into relationship with him start living in the power of the blood the modern church has forgot about the power of the blood there is power power wonder working power in the blood oh of the lamb there is power power Wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Ephesians 1, 7, in whom we have redemption through His blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. The riches of His grace entailed the shed. came down and gave His life to get them. Nobody except us. That's the kind of God. The place where the blood of Jesus is washed and cleansed us, we can walk in the power of the blood. We need to start living. And when I say start living, if you don't have the fullness of these things, you need to start getting more. And if you don't have any of it, you need to start right now. You don't need to wait until tomorrow or even the next day. Start living right now in the gifts of God. Let self die and let Jesus live in your life. Ephesians 2, 8 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Can you say it's the gift of God to me? The gift of God to me is that I'm saved through faith. Start living in the gifts of God. Let self die. Let Jesus live in your life. Start living in the Spirit of God. You should have the fruits of God manifest in your life if you call yourself a believer. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, Goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. Oh, wow, that's the most difficult of all, I think. But that should be operating in your life. You control yourself. That sounds like, some, that sounds like a good message, don't it? Control yourself. <laughs> God will help you. You got a tongue that you can't get under control? Let the Holy Spirit bring that 
precious fruit of abundance of self-control out of you, and the tongue will stay in the mouth, and the mind will stay, become stayed upon the good things of God. Hallelujah. The gifts of God. Holy Spirit gifts. There's all kinds of ministries of the Spirit, but we're given the nine gifts of the Spirit spelled out for us in the Word of God, the gift of wisdom and knowledge and discernment, and then the gift of healing and miracles. The gift of supernatural faith. And then we have the gift of prophecy, speaking, the utterance gifts and the gift of speaking in tongues and the gift of being able to interpret those other tongues. But I got to tell you something. that you, It doesn't take much to figure this out. We just came through Christmas and we always have all of these gifts in our home. And Isaiah, we usually have him do it because he's younger and he can reach down under the tree and not groan like we do. But he brings them out and he places them in front of us as though he's giving them to us. Now, they're all not from him, but it's the same way with God. If we just sat there and looked at those gifts and said, that's nice. Somebody bought this for me and they brought it and they sat it down in front of me. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that lovely wrapping paper. Look at that bow. Ah, what a wonderful gift. But I'm telling you, this is a word from God. This is the truth of the matter. His gifts are treated that way. He tells you what they are in His Word. When you become saved, you get enough of the Holy Spirit inside of you to know that there's more. Nobody here has arrived yet, have they? Oh, good. I'm in good company. <laughs> Nobody's arrived yet, but all of us, all of us have gifts that God has set before us. Now, we on Christmas morning, we grab those gifts and we tear them open to see and to experience the wonder of what's inside that's for us. God's gifts are given for each of you. They are special gifts just for you. And when you receive a gift, like some of the gifts that I received, I got this cool wrench that you put on and it automatically clamps down and grabs a hold of the nuts. You don't have to adjust it or anything. And it's really good. It's strong. She said, go out and try that and see if you like it. And I did. And it, it really works well. But that gift that I was given... If I just used that for me, that'd be one thing, but I know, she knows, you know that when I use that, it's going to be because I'm, I'm fixing something in our household for all of us. So when you're given a gift by God and you take it and you open it and you're like, oh, wonderful. You've given me the gift of discernment. I see that this is not good he gave that to you so you could tell others. You could say, hey, this is not good. God just showed me. He revealed to me that this is not a good thing. Stay away from it. Now you have shared that gift and all can benefit. That's the way the gifts of God are designed to operate. So start opening those gifts. Just don't let them set there in front of you. Experience the wonder of the gifts of God. Start living in power and in strength. We all know this verse. We love to quote it. I can do all things through which strengtheneth me. Well, I don't know about you, but I need some strengthening. When I'm going through stuff, I need some strengthening or else I can't make it through. And neither can you. Nobody can. But Jesus Christ says, you can do all things through me if you'll let me strengthen you. Start praying for all. We touched on that a little earlier. I touched on it a little bit last week. I don't want to pray for those nasty this and that people. I don't want to pray for those that are 
bringing filth before young people that are telling boys that they're girls and girls that I don't want to pray for them, but God says you're to pray for them. Because if you don't, who's going to? The world's not going to. The world's going to hell with them. But we're not. So God says, you pray for them, that my spirit may able, be able to touch them, that you may, may become a part of the ministry. God doesn't do all of this on his own. We're active participants. We weren't created to sit down. I've been saved. And so I sit on the bench and I watch the whole game in front of me. No, we were created and we were saved to get up and to go out onto the field of life and to use the skills and the knowledge that he gives us to play the game of life, if you want to put it that way, and to be a success. Can you say, I'm on the winning team? I'm on the winning team. You're on the winning team. We watch football games on TV and we're like, man, my team lost. You're never going to say that with God. (laughs) Isn't that great? My team never loses. My team always is going to win because I'm on God's team. Are you on God's team? Then start praying. Pray for others. First of all, 1 Timothy 2 and 1, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good, and this is acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. God, our Savior. I thought Jesus was my Savior. God, our Savior. Hmm. God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God. Can you say Amen. There's one mediator between God and men. Can you say amen? And who is that? The man who? Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Start praying for all help and salvation. Confess your faults one to another. I don't want to tell people what I did. Because I might have done it to them. Well, you don't have to go around blabbing what you've done to everybody. Who do you confess your sins to? Father, and if you've done wrong to somebody, you need to go to them too. But you don't get up and broadcast it to the whole assembly. Oh, I've done this and I've done that. I've heard people do that before. I'm like, why are you doing that? Don't you realize that you just raised up a whole swarm of hornets against you? When God said, just come to me and I'll forgive you, James 5.16, pray for one another. John 1 and 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Well, hallelujah. So start living righteously. Start living forgiven. You're saying, I'm doing all these things. Well, I thank God for you. Then why don't you join me? even right now, and start drinking from the fountain of the water of life. Why? Because in Revelation 21, it says this, to those who drink from the water of the fountain of life, God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death. Hallelujah. Neither sorrow. Oh, Lord, we long for that day nor crying except tears of joy neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away I'm going to be glad for that day and he that sat upon the throne said behold I make all things new and he said unto me right for these words are true and faithful and he said unto me it is done it is done I am Alpha I am Omega the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst from the fountain of the water of life freely. If you want more life, just three words I want to give you. Thirst for God. You got to have a thirst for 
God, if you want to live your life free, be thirsty for the things of God. Thank you, Lord, for your words of life. Thank you for the water of life, your word. Thank you for the spirit of life. Thank you for all of those things that guarantee us a place, a position with you in eternity. Help us, Lord, to do our part while we're on this earth. Lord, so many need to hear a good word. Let us be the broadcasters of the good news that the blood of Jesus Christ was shed to wash away your sins and to bring you into the family of God. He loves you no matter who you are, what you've done, where you've been, how long you've been. He loves you and he wants to restore you and he wants to put you in a place where you are loved and you can love others. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for your provision and promise. Even this night, even in these difficult times, we hold on to and we grasp onto your promises. In Jesus' name.
you say, yes, Lord, yes, yes Lord, to your will and to your way, no matter what it is, I just say yes to it right now, right here tonight. From now, from this day forward, I want to start over until the end of my life on this earth. I want to say yes, Lord, to your will and to your ways, for they are good and they are pleasant. So thank you for leading, for guiding, for protecting, for being with us, Lord, this evening and for all times. In Jesus' name we pray, Father. Amen. And amen. All right, I pray you've been blessed. I pray you've been encouraged to maybe start over with some things. God, just start over God. Anybody have a birthday since last week? Or maybe the week before? No? Okay. Well, let's sing Come and Dine, and then let's uh, go ahead and have a meal together. Jesus has a table spread where the saints of God are fed. He invites his chosen people come and die. With his manna he does feed and supplies our every need. Oh, it's sweet to sup with Jesus all the time. Come and die, the master call and come. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for us, yes. and thank you for the testimonies and testimonies in the house tonight. Yes. Thank you that you're a prayer answering yes. God. Yes. And we ask that you would bless this yes. food to the nourishment of our yes. bodies. Bless the hands that prepared it yes. in Jesus' name. In Amen. Jesus name. Amen. Amen.